So today's video is on thermoregulation. So first we have to look at the difference between endotherms and ectotherms. So endotherms are organisms that generate heat through physiological or metabolic processes. So this could include shivering and vasoconstriction or vasodilation. And ectotherms are organisms that generate heat through behavioral processes only. So this could be um, reptiles that lie in the sun or obtain heat from the ground or by sheltering, so through behavioural processes rather than metabolic or physiological. And so we're going to be looking at endotherms today, and this is the ones you'll have to know for the A-level, so organisms that generate heat through metabolic or physiological processes. And first we're going to look at how endotherms conserve or gain heat in the cold. So the first way they can do this is through vasoconstriction. So you can see here we have a diagram of the skin and the uh, blood vessels beneath the skin. So in vasoconstriction, the arterial under the skin becomes smaller, so it constricts. And you can see that here. The arterial has narrowed its lumen. It's constricted. And the shunt vessel becomes larger, so it dilates. So this vessel here is called a shunt vessel, and this connects the two ends of the arterioles, the two uh, ends of the arteriole and the venule. So it um, bypasses the capillaries at the skin surface and just goes straight from the arteriole to the venule, skips past all of this. So this shunt vessel dilates. And so as the shunt vessel dilates and the arteriole constricts, more blood is forced through the shunt vessel rather than the arteriole. You can see here through it being thicker, there's more blood going through this shunt vessel than up to the surface. So this means less blood reaches the capillaries on the surface of the skin. And this means that less heat can be radiated from the skin um, because there is less blood for the heat to be lost from. So less heat is lost. So heat is conserved in the cold. And then another way that they can conserve heat in the cold is through raising hairs. So the erectophily muscle contracts and so this pulls the hairs up. So you have a layer of air trapped above the skin. Because all of these hairs are standing upright, they trap this insulating layer of air above the skin. And as air is a poor conductor of heat, this is an insulating layer of air, so it conserves heat. We don't lose heat as easily when our hairs are raised. And this is because this erector muscle contracts, pulling the hairs up, making this insulating layer of air to help us conserve heat. And some other ways that endotherms can conserve or gain heat in the cold will be through shivering. So this is involuntary contraction of muscles to generate metabolic heat because metabolic processes uh, release heat energy. And so shivering, this involuntary contraction, can generate this. Then there is increased metabolic rate. So this increases the heat generated again, helping to gain heat in the cold decreased sweating because we don't sweat in the cold and we'll see why this is advantageous in the heat. And then there are also behavioral mechanisms. So this could be sheltering from the cold or huddling together like penguins. So these are the ways that endotherms can conserve or gain heat in the cold. It will be through vasoconstriction, it will be through um, raising the hairs, it can be through shivering, an increased metabolic rate, decreasing in sweating, all these behavioural mechanisms. And then moving on to endotherms and how they lose heat in the warm. So we're still looking at these organisms that generate heat through uh, metabolic or physiological processes, but this time how they lose heat when it's warm. So some general uh, ways that they can lose heat, if they're being adapted to a warm environment, then they may have a small surface area to volume ratio. Um, 
So this means that there will be a quicker rate of heat loss because there will be a larger surface area to lose heat from. There could be increased sweating, and this is because energy is used to evaporate the water off of the skin. So when we release the water onto the skin, our body um, transfers a lot of energy into this water to try evaporate it off our skin. And because water has a high specific latent heat of vaporization, it takes a lot of energy to evaporate this water. So we're transferring a lot of energy, heat energy from our bodies into this water, which helps us lose heat. And then there'll be behavioral mechanisms again, like sheltering from the sun in the shade. So then we looked at vasoconstriction for gaining or conserving heat, and now vasodilation for losing heat. So we have this same diagram again, but instead for vasodilation. So uh, the opposite of vasoconstriction, our arterial now dilates. So its lumen expands. It has a larger lumen, it dilates, it's larger. And our shunt vessel shrinks, so it constricts. So the complete opposite of vasoconstriction. Our arterial has dilated and our shunt vessel has constricted. So this means that more blood is now forced to the surface of the skin because more blood is passed through the arterial and into the capillaries because the arterial has dilated and less blood will be forced through this shunt vessel because it's now very narrow. So we now have more blood filling the capillaries at the surface of the skin. So this means there's more blood for more heat to be radiated out of the skin. So we're now losing heat to the environment through vasodilation. Another way that we can lose heat in the warm is by lowering body hairs. So again, the opposite of when it's cold. So the hair erector muscle relaxes this time. Remember when we were um, trying to conserve heat, we wanted it to contract so the hairs were pulled upright. But now we want the muscle to relax so that the hair is flattened to the skin. And so now with the uh, hair flattened to the skin, it reduces the insulating layer of air. Because when we wanted it to stand upright, we would keep this uh, insulating layer of air, which would help us conserve heat. However, now it is warm. We want to reduce this insulating layer so that heat is lost.